River Anna Armello Story The Infection The wolf silently obeyed, following the spy cellar up to the stairs, where the gerbil opened a door and let her enter first, closing quickly the door with two keys turn. The room was a sort of laboratory, full of files, jars, steels, pots and alembics, medical tools and various sorts of plants, insects and even body parts. The smell was pungent, a mist between mint and something acid. Finally you showed up! The Podesta is in deep trouble while your damn mother has been deciding if it was an important matter or not. The Podesta told you that the body was a female bear, yes? He did, and we know that she was a member of the King and Torridge. What did you find? Where's the body? The body was covered with scratches and bites that seemed to be wolf type. It was decapitated. Whoever did this used a sharp sword and was a strong animal. But that wasn't the most interesting part of it. While talking, the gerbil hurried around the laboratory, searching for a pair of pliers of a particular big jar hidden in a secret compartment behind the closet in the laboratory. River, near the door, got more anxious about those pieces of information. All the clues showed that probably was indeed Thane, but the rangers still believed that it was impossible and that the Prince of Blades was innocent. But now it was urgent to bring him home. If the King's Guard founded him, there was no way for him to escape the sentence. This was the interesting part. The gerbil put on the table with extreme delicacy the glass jar. And River at first gave an uninterested look. Then, when she noticed the black and purple material inside of it, she looked again and got closer. Inside the glass, a piece of flesh was covered in something that looked like swamp mud, black and mucilaginous. A faint, thin breath of dark smoke was coming out from that flesh and covered the jar. One of River's paw tried to reach it, but the voice of the gerbil stopped her immediately. Don't touch it! What is it? I don't know, but whatever it is appeared on the bear skin. Thanks to the wild, I used gloves at that time. What do you mean? The gerbil took out another jar with another piece of meat, but this was fresh, usually found in a butcher counter. The bone setter, with his pair of pliers, took the flesh of meat and with odd concentration put it inside the jar with the dark mucilage. At first nothing happened, but then... River noticed the mucilage starting to move slowly towards the fresh flesh. Its dark and tarry consistency began to cover the meat. And then suddenly, a handful of black worm came out from the mucilage and started to create holes in the meat and get inside. Rapidly, the flesh got the same color as the infected one and a big pile of black smoke start to rise from it. But at that point, the gerbil already closed the jar, so the smoke completely fulfilled the container. As you can see, this... this infectious is quite contagious. I discovered it when it tried to get out from the open jar. I'm afraid that even the smoke carries the disease. Because of its dangerous nature, I had no choice but to destroy the body and burn it. That is the only part of it that still remains. River's eyes kept watching the jar, now covered inside by a thick dark smoke. The wolf memories brought her back to the mountains, when her and the sister found, with Prince Fang, the exiled prince, the first traces of that illness. River held out a paw. Within, 
a rolled piece of parchment. Found this in the wagon. The letter is... Well, you'll see soon enough. The two rangers waited as the prince silently finished reading, the wind continuing to howl around them. Finally, he raised his eyes from the parchment and glanced to River, who offered a knowing nod. Orders from the king. The king? Sky looked at the ghastly tableau spread out before them. The king of Armello? Fang turned the parchment over. A broken wax seal was split in half on the top and bottom. He folded the letter, connecting the seal, though he already knew what form it would take. The royal seal. Sky turned to her sister. What the letter said? These creatures were hired just across the border, in Esterdale, to escort a powerful soothsayer to this ground, to stop a terrible evil, to stop agents of the rot from opening this gateway. Agents of rot? These... these are children's tale, River. We can't... The hardly children's tales. River gestured at the dead bodies scattered about. And in case you didn't notice, the cave doors been opened for the first time in ages. Children's tales or no, it's clear the king sent this creature here to stop this. And they failed. Maybe not, Sky said, walking towards the cave entrance. The blizzard had calmed and the wind was finally stilled. None of these creatures look like a soothsayer to me. At Esterday, there was the order of the worm. They tried and succeed to open the gateway. And then the rot started to spread. Are you going to keep it? Absolutely not. I had to because the Podesta asked me to wait until someone from the dead mother came over. But this thing is too dangerous. I'm afraid of the possibility that someone may accidentally find this jar. What if the king's guard may ask about it? Only three people know about the infection in South Bank. Me, the Podesta, and now you. If the king's guard finds that out, we will know who talked. The bone setter gave a long and suspicious glance at the wolf, who looked the jar again. The smoke was slowly fainting, revealing now two pieces of meat covered in a black and purple mucilage.